Let's turn Camera's over. Camera's ready. Yep. My passion for film started when I was six years of age in my family's video shop called the Talash Video Centre. We had worldwide cinema, Bollywood, Hollywood, British films, that was where my passion for film started. Working in the industry has always been a childhood dream of mine and cognition is all about following your dream. I came up with a dystopian sci-fi story when I was living opposite the Battersea Power Station, an amazing building which commands the London skyline. We really wanted to try and mount this film on an ambitious scale in terms of story and setting. So the short film is, is really in, in the vein of Spielberg, you know, Star Wars, Blade Runner, and that kind of worlds that we were trying to create, but obviously on a limited time and budget. Action! Locations were really, really important for our dystopian sci-fi setting. We filmed in an old pharmaceutical factory, a water plant, a concrete theater, as well as a Battersea power station. Our main cast were Andrew Scott, who's playing the father, and Jeremy Irvine playing the son. We had a genuinely, amazingly talented cast on our movie. I have been a sci-fi freak probably for a long time. <laughs> I mean, I kind of run the entire empire, so that's quite cool. I was very honoured to be offered that, that part. I don't think I've done a sci-fi film before. I was really lucky because I had alongside great actors like Jeremy, you know, Lucy, everyone. And the team were great as well. You could really sense how Ravi, how he loved his creations and uh, how he knew what he wanted to see. Cognition is all about mind control. It's a really beautiful story of one man's journey, his relationship with his father, and it's a great core story that's always beautiful to see because it's, it's human. To capture the high production value of this film, we had actually steady cams, tracks, dollies, cranes. We had a drone cam operator. We were very lucky to actually get a BBC helicopter, which is run by Arena Aviation, to get the aerial shots of the Battersea Power Station when we were filming. We used uh, Cook anamorphic lenses primarily for the anamorphic feel uh, that you get, but then we wanted to juxtapose that by using spherical lenses on the flashbacks, and we used some vintage uh, Super Speed Mark IIs for that. So we basically wanted to try and get as much of the main elements for the actors as possible on the day, so whether it be Andrew Scott on sand, as opposed to a digital green screen of sand, to lend uh, a better feel for the, the story and also for easier work when we go into post-production. The visual effects was a really challenging process on this film and we worked with a whole load of companies covering all the visual effects, the 2D, the 3D work. The work I did on the Battersea Power Station scene was primarily clean-up. I had to remove cranes, I had to remove trains, I had to repair sections of the Battersea Power Station that were in the process of reconstruction and bring it back to its former glory. We also worked with Technicolor for the grading of the film, improving every single element and scene in the film. We worked hard through the desert scene and we wanted it to have a real feel that was not only unique, but kind of echoed with the, the dream. We want to emulate things from the past, create things for the future. We're changing the way the lens represents the people that we're seeing on screen. And we're working with driving that eye to the point of focus. We want you to naturally fall where the storytelling is happening before you go on and explore the rest of the frame. Our very talented composer Samuel Colbone, we actually had a discussion about recording with a full orchestra and we were determined to make it a reality. And it became a dream come true when a huge BBC concert orchestra truck arrived at Air Studios and we had a full orchestra of 55 talented musicians. Uh, this was the moment that I was like, wow, this is actually happening. It's going to turn 
my music that I've been writing in my studio into something much bigger. Sound design is such an integral role for our movie. We were lucky to record the score at Twickenham Film Studios, where we've actually done a Dolby Atmos mix. And we were just genuinely very, very lucky to work with Emmy Award winning sound editor Stuart McCowan. And he did an incredible job with his whole team. The print of the final mix was delayed due to the virus lockdown. Abbey Road Studios came to our rescue and gave us the six hours we required to finish things off. We are genuinely grateful for all the companies and all the crew who have supported us on our project. And I think the cast and crew really blew it all out of the water. They, they really just did an amazing job. Two, one. Being part of it is unexplainable, it's incredible. And certainly having live players like the BBC Concert Orchestra, all these amazing people involved in it, it was an absolute dream come true. It is intriguing to see what it will look like. I mean, Ravi showed me a couple of clips and he was like, what do you think, what do you think? And I'm just like, look at him and I've got, you know, I'm crying. It's really strong, powerful and affecting. And he's got extraordinary people involved in it and extraordinary companies to come on board with incredible resources. So myself and all the team have really put all our passion into the film and we really hope you enjoy Cognition when it's released. Thank you.